Yeah. Talking to my mirror like I love you so much. Curving all my critics like I heard you so what? You can't kill my confidence, I think I'm the man. Tally all the f I ever gave on my head. Over the weekend, Jake Paul served up a two-piece combo from Popeyes to Ben Askren, and now he's got the entire fight world talking about him. And all I gotta say is I told you so. I, I told everybody the MMA world was mad at me. That, oh my god. Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh, 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 oh these kids punched the shit out of Ben, man. Ben Askren should be ashamed of himself. He walked in there looking like a fat slob. And they got everybody talking about him, including us. <laughs> Especially after that one punch knockout. And it sounds like it might be a problem to me. Somebody gotta do something about this Jake Paul, man. They gonna have to give him somebody real now. I was impressed by the knockout because it was a one hitter quitter. What's up y'all, my name is Prince and I'm talking about all the things that I love about martial arts. I'm picking back up with my series on the problems with traditional martial arts and in this video we're going to talk about the problem with Jake Paul's boxing. So at this point in time Jake Paul is sitting on a 3-0 professional boxing career. His first fight he knocked out another YouTube creator and no one was really taking this boxing thing seriously until the end of April when Jake Paul knocked out three-time slam dunk winner Nate Robinson in the second round of their fight. And even then, people were looking at the victory like, dawg, you knocked out a dude who played in the NBA, but he's like 12 years older than you, and he came in with very little training. Because Nate Robs is a basketball player that should have never been in the ring, as Snoop Dogg would say, you don't play boxing. So Jake has been trying to get the attention of Conor McGregor for one of these celebrity boxing match events, and after the Nate Robinson fight, he started going after MMA guys. So that brings us to the Ben Askren fight that Jake managed to win unsurprisingly to some people who looked at the individual skill sets that both these guys were bringing to the ring. I mean, ben Askren is a guy known for eating punches and not having a great stand-up game because, well, he's an Olympic wrestler and a very skilled grappler. And I mean, I thought that he might take Jake into the later rounds and basically rope-a-dope him like Ali did to George Foreman in the Rumble in the Jungle. Ben Askren's main goal, it looked like, was just to try to tie him up and lay on him. Yeah. And Jake just hit him with a one-two. Dang. But that's not what happened. Jake hit Ben with what looked to me like a two-piece combo. And ben hit the canvas. And even though he managed to get back up, the ref called the fight. He started the count, and then Ben Askren was up, and he was like, I'm good, type of thing. And then all of a sudden, the ref's like, nope, nothing. What? Like, no continue. That's no it. way. Over. The referee stopped it, and I said, are you really sure that's what you want to do? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, I, I'm fine. And uh, and then that was it. So then I went, okay, I don't need to be here anymore. I'm out of here. The MMA fans first said that Ben took a dive, and then they accused the referee of throwing the fight. And all kinds of wild things that really don't make any sense started to appear online, posted by many people who will probably never set foot in a gym and will likely never participate in any kind of a combat sport. Now, one of the things that I keep seeing is that well, MMA fighters can't box. And that's really playing into the narrative that Jake Paul is putting out to get people talking about these fights. But I mean, my question to the people that are repeating this claim is, I mean, how do you know? Like, how do you know the MMA fighters can't box? Is your proof in the fact that Ben Askren lost a match to Jake Paul and that, I mean, Conor McGregor lost a boxing match to Floyd Mayweather? Because, I mean, if we're talking about Conor versus Floyd, well, you're really not making a good argument. Floyd is one of the all-time greats, and I mean, like, he's been training since he was a child. With the Jake Paul-Ben Askren fight, you're looking at a guy who was sitting on the couch for like two years who was never known for his striking in the first place. In terms of the weigh-in, you have Jake Paul who was pretty solid 190. Ben Askren who was not a solid 190. <laughs> he was a fluffer. Who looks like he had just gotten off of his couch, you know, after 16 months of laying on. Ben Askren used to fight at 170 in MMA. Yeah. And even when he fought at 170, he was a fluffy 170. Yeah, he didn't. He, he didn't, was never he really shredded. shredded or anything. Uh, so he was like, 
probably had to gain weight just to make weight. <laughs> he probably had to eat more just to gain weight. And it if took him on your couch months for, of sitting on the couch just to make weight. Yeah, just to. He probably had to train. Couldn't overtrain because he would lose too much weight. Yeah. And I mean, he was pretty much handpicked by Jake Paul's team for that very reason. I mean, let's take someone like Amanda Nunes, a great striker. She basically retired Ronda Rousey from the UFC with her fist. If Amanda Nunez were to enter one of these exhibition boxing matches, would you seriously say that she's only got a puncher's chance the same way people did with Conor McGregor in his fight with Floyd Mayweather? Look, here's the thing. When you sign on to compete in a boxing match, you need to show up and prepare for the rules and everything that go along with a boxing contest. I mean, yeah, I'm sure there are some technical things that someone who is an expert in boxing, they might have that an MMA athlete may not have due to the requirements of their sport. But if you don't believe that there is some carryover in these sports, you're either kidding yourself or you don't know what you're talking about in the first place. Look, take baseball and golf as an example. Golf is about finesse and using the momentum of the club head to generate more speed and to transfer that force into that golf ball. So the way you really want to accomplish this is by making the club head travel a farther distance to get to the ball. Swinging a baseball bat, that's a little bit different. I mean, sure, you can finesse it like with a golf swing, but there's some differences. I mean, for one, the ball is moving towards you versus being stationary. Also, if you look at power hitters, they're usually strong guys. I mean, just look at what went on with guys like Martin McGuire, Jose Canseco, Sammy Sosa, and Barry Bonds. It seemed like the more power that they could produce through artificial or natural means, the more that they could knock the ball out of the park. So you see that there are some differences in hitting a golf ball far versus a baseball, but these are both rotation sports. The kinematic sequence in a baseball swing and a golf swing are pretty much the same, and the training to improve the rotational strength for both of these sports is going to be the same. So what I'm saying is that you can have two related sports and a lot of the exact same skills carry over. You guys may not know this, but look, I've been a personal trainer and a kettlebell instructor for almost 10 years now. And at some point, I'm going to complete my certification for mixed martial arts strength and conditioning. And I'm saying all of this because a lot of the stuff that you would do, at least from the strength and conditioning side, is going to be the same for all combat sport athletes. From that side of the coin, if you have two equally skilled people competing, it's probably going to be the better athlete who wins. And I mean, it's tough to accept, but in all three of Jake Paul's fights, he just may have been the more skilled fighter and the bigger, better athlete when it comes to boxing. So we can't say that this is evidence that MMA athletes cannot box. Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Let's communicate here. I mean, you can look at a great coach like Ramsey Dewey as an example. And if you don't know Ramsey Dewey, he has a great YouTube channel that I pretty much watch daily. He's also a coach at a combat sports gym in Shanghai, China, and a former fighter. Let's address this idea that MMA fighters can't box or MMA coaches can't train boxers at all. Last week leading up to this fight, Ramsey Dewey posted a video where he talked about taking six amateur MMA athletes from his gym to compete in a boxing tournament, and all six of his fighters won their matches. Now, I mean, look, this doesn't go with the narrative that MMA fighters can't box. Ramsey takes six of his MMA guys into a boxing tournament, and they all clean house. So, I mean, what does that mean? Well, it means that when you have two people who walk into a place to have a fighting contest, the one who is best prepared is most likely going to walk out as the winner. And it doesn't have anything to do with who did boxing, MMA, jiu-jitsu, kung fu, or basket weaving. I mean, half of y'all believe Bruce Lee is the father of MMA, and Bruce's only recorded official fight was the Catholic school boxing championship that he won as a teenager in Hong Kong. He couldn't kick or use any Wing Chun in that three round fight either. So one of the things that Ramsey Dewey pointed out in a video on this fight is that Jake Paul has become a high profile Charlie Lee. 
And if you don't know Charlie Zelenoff, he was a viral sensation and probably one of the most hated people to get internet famous. He's a self-proclaimed go to boxing, sporting what he claims to be a record of 331 and zero. Now, I first learned of Charlie Z back in the MySpace days where he was in these viral videos where he'd ask people on the street to box with him. And as soon as they put on their gloves, he would proceed to pummel them with headshots trying to score a knockout. Now, I had no idea until Ramsey Dewey mentioned it, but Charlie Z had loaded gloves. He cut out the padding in his gloves, so when he was hitting someone, it was bare knuckle. The one thing I'll give to Charlie Z was that even though he's a total dirtbag, he at least challenged real boxers. The first time I saw him in a big viral video was when he threw a cheap shot at Floyd Mayweather Sr. in their gym out in Las Vegas, and I'm gonna tell you, look, I'm not sure how he made it out of there alive. Now, like I said, Charlie Z was beating up people on the street and whether he admits it or not, taking beaters from boxers who knew what they were doing, like when Deontay Wilder almost beat the brakes off of him in his gym. And these videos were going viral and I'm sure some kind of way, Charlie Z was receiving some form of compensation from his crazy wild antics. And this is where the comparison to Jake Paul comes into play. I mean, Jake Paul doesn't need to go around beating up people in hopes that a video will go viral. I mean, I don't watch his stuff on YouTube, but as someone who studies the YouTube game, I know that Jake Paul is big on Vine and he used to be on some Disney show. Jake is one of those people on the platform where he can post almost anything and his legions of teenage fans will make his videos go viral. So if he's gonna do the Charlie Z thing with his boxing, well, he's gotta take it to the next level. And that brings me to the next big point. And that's the real problem with Jake Paul's boxing. It's like just this snowball that's rolling downhill and compounding. And uh, it's, it's pretty crazy to see. See, the problem with Jake Paul's boxing is that he's not actually trying to be a boxer. Look, think about it now. This guy's been in the spotlight for what feels to me like a decade. He could easily invest his money somewhere and then say, okay, y'all, I'm going to take a break from all this YouTube stuff and make a run at becoming a professional boxer. And some people might say that that's exactly what he's doing, but it's not. He skipped the amateur ranks all together and jumped straight to the pros. He's invested in Triller so he can create his own pay-per-view events. And he doesn't need these boxing associations to give him permission to hold a big fight. I mean, on some level, it's really a genius thing that he's doing. Look, he's the fighter, the manager, and the promoter. He's also an investor in the platform that's hosting the fights. He's wearing all of those hats. And look, when it comes to get paid, guess what? He's getting all those paychecks too. So it doesn't matter if he gets knocked out, goes the distance to win by decision, or loses a close fight. Win, lose, or draw, he's walking out of the ring as a winner. The fact that he's the ultimate heel who everyone wants to see get knocked out, look, that just adds more to his earnings because that's one more person who might buy the next fight hoping to see him get knocked out and humiliated. I, I'm just a troll at the end of the day. And so people are playing my game. Now I only know one sport where people play that kind of game. And that's the world of professional wrestling entertainment. You know, with the scripted wrestling shows where the action is real, but the fights usually have some predetermined outcome. You see, that's what the real problem is with Jake Paul's boxing. It's not actually the sport of boxing. It's boxing entertainment. Combat sports needed some spunk. And it's almost like the WWE is now mixing in with boxing and MMA. Look y'all, Jake Paul admitted this a long time ago. He said that he'll continue to call out fighters and pick his opponents. They'll get a big payday because people will keep watching hoping to see him get beat. And I mean, maybe a big name like Conor McGregor will finally agree to fight him. Or maybe he really will fight an established boxer at cruiserweight who will beat him. But I mean, when he loses, will it really matter? I mean, how much money would Jake Paul have made before he either fights someone that his team hasn't handpicked because they're sure that he can beat him, or he fights someone who gives him more fight than he thought they had? I mean, even if he does lose, in the grand scheme of things, does it really matter? 
Jake Paul is already rich. And if he hadn't done these last two boxing matches, how many of us would be talking about this dude? <laughs> I know I wouldn't. He's not strutting about it. He just made $500,000 mm -hmm. in, what, a minute? <laughs> two minutes? I mean, really, Ben Askren is the big winner here. Look, y'all, he agreed to participate in Jake's latest boxing entertainment event. He didn't last a full round, and he walked away with close to a million dollars. And I made a lot of money, and unfortunately, I didn't get the result I wanted to, but again, Monday afterwards, I'm just gonna go back to my regular everyday life. When he was asked what he plans to do next, he said, go home and teach some wrestling. And I mean, if you're some kid trying to win a high school state championship in wrestling and earn a college scholarship, do you care if the guy teaching you got knocked out in a boxing match against a YouTube star? The only people who care about stupid stuff like that probably don't train and their opinions really don't matter. So I'm just going to leave you with that thought. But hey, y'all, y'all keep on breathing and I'll see you in the next video.